Okay, hi everyone and welcome to another of my video tutorials. In this video we're going to look at a technique called exposure blending. Now the reason we need to do exposure blending is because sometimes the scene that we photograph, the dynamic range of that scene is far too big for the camera to handle. And by dynamic range we mean the difference between the darkest part of your scene and the brightest part of your scene. Now you, you're probably familiar with the histogram. The histogram indicates that and the histogram shows a value of brightness from 0 to 255. 0 is your darkest point, so your shadow area. 255 is your brightest point, which is also your highlight area. Anything that falls below the 0 is completely black with no detail. Anything that falls above 255 is completely white with no detail. So essentially anything that falls over 255 becomes what's known as blown. Now these parts of the sky here you can see are blown and this is in Adobe, we're, we're using Adobe Camera Raw here and you can see on the histogram here that this highlight clipping warning indicator is on and there's a big spike at the very end and that will be these parts here. Now the way to see that is you can hold down your Alt key and adjust your whites. If you click on the whites and hold down the Alt key you can see that these areas in white, are, this is showing you the blown parts of your scene. So these parts here are completely blown with no detail. Conversely if we again hold down the Alt key and click on the blacks these yellow areas down here are indicating the shadow areas that are clipped. So these are completely black. Now there's not too much of that, of course. So although when we look at a scene, we can see much more detail across the brightness range. So we, if we have extremes of, of light and dark, which is typical of a scene like this, the sun was actually coming up uh, behind the lighthouse. The sun was rising, there's a lot of cloud in the sky, it was diffusing it a bit, but still it was extremely bright. So we're looking into the sun and we get high contrast scenes in these situations. So of course the camera has been unable to completely record all of the detail across that scene. Now this has been exposed as best as possible, but still we've got blown areas here. So um, there are two things we can do. When you have a scene like this where really it's just the sky that is so much brighter than the foreground, we can put an ND grad on the front of the lens. But sometimes you've got scenes that have got other things like lighthouse, mountains, hills, and sometimes it's not always that easy. And sometimes the difference in contrast isn't a clear division between the sky and the foreground. So there are other situations. And that's where doing exposure blending can come in very handy. Now, to do exposure blending, you need to do something that's called exposure bracketing, or you basically need to take two or more exposures taken at different exposures, actually. So in this case, for example, I've done a nominal exposure. Then I did an exposure for the sky. So in this case here, you can see now if we click on the Alt key and the whites, there's a small bit here, but it's not too much. So I've managed to capture much more detail all around here. And if we click on the blacks in this image, we're going to see still a little bit down there, but it's not too much. And in the next image, I overexposed. In this case, the idea was to capture more detail and brightness in the foreground area, in the shadows. So now if we click on the whites, you can see there's much more uh, area in the sky that is completely blown. But if we click on the foreground here, there's much less. So we've got, we've managed to capture much more detail down here. We've captured some detail in the, the waves and the sea, but this is completely blown. And what we're going to do is choose two of those and blend them. So I'm going to choose the darker one because I've got much more detail here in the sky. And then I'm going to choose the brighter one here because I've got much more detail in the foreground and I've got some nice wave action here. 
So in Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to select these two and I'm going to open them into Photoshop. So we've got our two images in Photoshop now. And now I'll show you how I blend the two. Now it's very important when you do this that you have your camera set on a tripod and there is absolutely no movement of your camera or your tripod between exposures. So when you blend the two, they will match up. Now when you're shooting seascapes, of course, you can't always help the movement of the sea. Plus also you have to be careful of the clouds. So in this case, the reason I've chose this much brighter image is because I've managed to burn out a lot of the detail in the sky. So I won't get so much mismatch because sometimes if you blend skies and there are clouds and those clouds have moved between exposures, then you can get a ghosting effect because you get a mismatch between the clouds. So by burning out the sky completely like this, I minimize the risk of a mismatch when I blend those two skies in. The foreground, I'm not going to blend at all. So I don't have to worry about the difference between the waves here because I'm not going to blend this at all. So I'm going to use this exposure here and I'm going to blend it with my darker exposure. So what I'm going to do is try to pull the sky from the darker exposure through onto here. So the easiest way to do that is to, I do control and A, or you can go up here, select all. Select the image itself and then go to edit copy. Then open this image, go to edit and paste. So what we do, if we go to our layers palette, we've now pasted the brighter image on top of the darker image. So we've got two layers here. And then make sure we go down here, make sure that you've got your color palettes here, black and white, and you want black on the top. Then go up to layer, layer mask, and reveal all. So we've now put a layer mask on the top layer here. Now what, so what we're going to do here is we are going to blend the layer underneath through to the layer on top. So th in this case, we're talking about the sky. Now there are two tools that you can use for this. There's the gradient tool here, which you can use for skies only, or there's the brush tool. Now in this video, I'm going to show you why, when and where to use each tool. In this one, I'm going to use the gradient tool. So if I click here, to select the gradient tool. You can select the opacity, so you can adjust that. I'm gonna keep it at 100%. And now what I'm gonna do is come down here and I'm gonna choose where I want to, if I pull this line down here and release, there, magic. Now what I've done using the gradient tool is I've managed to pull the sky through from the previous, from the layer underneath. And now I've blended those two, essentially almost like using a grad filter in on the front of your lens. Now you see that because we've got rocks here and we've got the lighthouse here, we've actually um, in the in the exposure underneath all of this was much darker too. And we've also blended that through, which we don't really want to do. So you can sometimes play around with it. You can, if we undo that gradient, you don't have to do the gradient straight down. Sometimes you can pull it at a bit of an angle like this. It's a lot of trial and error, so keep undoing it each time. Pull it a bit, yeah, that's a bit too much. Slight angle, just enough to try to avoid all that. But if that doesn't work, then going back to the way we did it before, what we can do is come down here to the dodge tool and lighten that. So on your dodge tool, make sure you've got shadow selected because that's what we want to lighten, the shadows. And here you can adjust the exposure. So we want to add maybe 25%. Now you can zoom in to the area to get a closer look of where we're working. And then Use the dodge tool to lighten these areas here. You can also lighten the, the lighthouse a bit. There we go. Uh, there, and now we have a difference. If I undo that, 
we can see that there we go we've lightened the lighthouse and we've lightened this up a bit more so it looks a bit more natural and then okay if that's finished then you can simply layer flatten the image and also continue to do a bit more work on it if you want to you can look at the levels if they need adjusting um, maybe if you want to tweak the highlights a bit more or not um, just finish up your work but there we have we have uh, blended the two images uh, the darker sky through to the brighter foreground so here in this image it's totally different because um, in this case we've got a vast difference in brightness not only in the sky but in the reflection on the water and then on the trees now exposing for that sky has basically made this area of trees and the reflection really really dark but exposing for that area of trees to bring out the lovely greens there we've overexposed the rest of the scene now the previous technique with the gradient tool okay we can do that for the sky and here but we've got all of this area around here so in this case it was going to be much better to use the brush tool now again I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to uh, layer the bright the brighter exposure so control and a control and C in my case I prefer to shortcuts and then control and V to paste that on as a layer same thing here come to layer layer mask reveal all so for this one I'm going to use the brush tool so if you come over here to the brush tool select it select brush tool okay here's the brush tool and come up here set the mode to normal and here I'm going to set the opacity to a hundred percent now if the layer underneath is too dark then you can reduce the opacity to uh, combat that but for now I'm going to set this to a hundred percent and up here you set your brush size now I'm going to need a big brush size because this I want to brush all this area through here so I'm going to bring my brush size up to maybe about this there you go that's a good size hardness to zero I want a soft edge and now I just simply click and hold and start brushing all of that layer through underneath there we go tops of the trees darken them just a touch and that's done a lovely job on that if I wanted to brush through some of the darker areas here then that's where maybe I could try my opacity I don't want to do it at a hundred percent let's see if we can reduce the size of the brush if I did it at a hundred percent that's how it will look so let's undo that um, I like it where it is but if I wanted to brush through some of it I could maybe take that down to 25 percent and then just brush it through a touch just to darken it a little bit okay so I'll undo that because I'll leave that the way that is and that's done that one so much easier okay so there you go two options you can use the gradient tool to to blend through the exposure from underneath or you can use the brush tool to do it so I hope that's been useful for you and uh, if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like and if you haven't already I would be would be very grateful if you subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos okay thanks for watching bye bye